Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program and my biggest problem on my game save at the moment. So you may remember this from yesterday. Um, well, well, it won't be yesterday for you, will it? But, but you'll remember this from last mission. There we go, that's a good phrase. Um, where we abandoned our friends in, well, not the, oh, hello. Well, this is not where I want to be looking. In not the most useful orbit in the world. Um, or I suppose it's not in the world, in space. Um, and uh, when I abandoned this, my thoughts were fairly clear at the time. I was like, okay, it's got a, it's got a, fuel, um, a, a docking port on it. We have ways of refueling. The moon is just there. And wouldn't it be great to get a science lab in orbit around the moon so that we can like fully exploit all the science and stuff there is to the moon? Now, there is a problem with this. If we come back here, Many people have pointed out that I used the wrong type of decoupler here, meaning that my um, docking port is covered by this, this this coupler, making it rather difficult to just come along and make a well and dock with it and, and pump fuel in because it would these engines would have been great to take it all the way up to the moon. Nah, that's not going to work, obviously. Um, now I don't have the claw. So I can't just slam something into the back of this, though I do have an awful lot of science. Uh, so what we might do is go have a look at the space center and see what's going on there. But if I decide nothing in the science can help, we're actually gonna go to the VAB. Right guys, so this is what I've been working on. Uh, I call it the cage, cause, well, can you guess what its form's gonna be? Um, mainly I've been making this, so if we come over here, I've made a sub-assembly of our stranded ship over here and this fits almost perfectly in like that okay so I think you can see what my plan is we're gonna go up we're gonna try and soft dock with it I, I, I throw that in inverted commas uh, and then we're gonna throw up a second piece to dock on here and clamp it in place I haven't made that second piece yet but believe that's coming um, and then hopefully we can just kind of float it down on all these uh, uh, all these parachutes, I hope. Okay, so that's my plan. I just wanted to tell you what what was going on. Uh, I'm gonna think about how we're gonna put this bottom bit on. It's obviously gonna be a second ship because unless you can start from this middle bit, it's really hard to tie all these docking ports together. So yeah, we're gonna have to make a second ship and we're gonna have to make a launch stage for this. I don't, I don't have any sub-assembly launch stages. So yeah, we're gonna have to get on and do that. I will be back probably on the launch pad. And then began what should have been the simple task of testing and getting this thing into orbit. Uh, it ended up being quite an iterative process, shall we say. Uh, I started off with this kind of four stage uh, thing because the cage had four prongs. I was like, right, let's throw a rocket underneath all of that. That didn't really work and that made it like ridiculously unstable. I then went for this, uh, well, I then went and bought the skipper um, science. Uh, which gave me this sort of one big central idea for, for a, a lifter stage. Uh, the main problem with this was my booster separation didn't really work very well. Um, and as you can see, as things were being pushed away by the radial decouplers, uh, they kept on smashing into each other. Uh, and occasionally I had this situation where I just took such a bad line that for some reason I was going across in the atmosphere too much and yeah. Eventually we got to a point where we could actually put this thing in orbit. Um, I then had to control it from the front docking port because that's the direction I put the rockets on it. For some reason I put the rockets upside down. Uh, and then we had to uh, just boost our way up. Now you see here I'm out of electric charge, meaning that I have just my monoprop to, do, uh, to deal with. Uh, this was an issue throughout this entire mission. Right now, I should have gone and fixed this. I should have just thrown some extra uh, solar panels on, just reverted the flight, everything would have been fine. But for some reason, I was close. I'd had such a horrendous testing phase. I was like, right, I'm just gonna put this in a nice parking orbit and get on with the next bit. Which of course was to build the end cap for the crane because, at, uh, not the crane, the cage. Because at the moment, whilst this is a nice coupling system, if we're trying to slow down or anything like that, the science bay will just fly out the end. Uh, so my main design philosophy with this was just to mirror uh, what we'd already put up in space, but a lot shorter. Because let's be honest, we didn't need this, this thing rattling around inside. Uh, I wanted to get a nice tight fit. Again, that will come back to bite me. 
but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll wait till then. Uh, so yeah, you can see what I've built here. It's nice and simple. Um, with the addition of a, a launcher, we've got this thing. I present to you Cage's Cap. Uh, literally just a nice little spaceship to fly around. The only problem I had with this was I put my fuel lines on the wrong way around. Not a big issue really. As soon as I figured out what was going on, I just reverted the flight. I do that a lot it seems when I'm uh, in this testing stage. And very quickly sorted out uh, meeting up and rendezvousing with the actual cage so we could build the complete ship. Rendezvousing wasn't too much of a bother. Uh, when I'd launched these ships, I got them pretty close together anyway. And using this wonderful um, sort of heads up display they give you here, the nav ball, that's the word I was looking for, I'd managed to get this uh, intersection down really quite low. I ended up using my monoprop at the end just to, to really fine fine tune those last few meters per second there. Uh, the way I do it basically is to make sure my two ships are close to each other um, with my launch. If you're miles apart in orbit this is, this is already a completely different scenario but yeah I, I, I launched them fairly close together and just found every way I could to trim the orbit close to each other. I made, I made the, the planes match, uh, got them as close as possible and then just changed the height of my orbit incrementally until the intersection told me that I was close. And from there on, it really just took a little bit of waiting around until we got this close to each other. And I was like, right, time to bust out the monoprop. Um, I switched over to the cage. The cage was the bigger one, so I got him to point in the right direction. Um, and then when that was done, I went back to the cage's cap and just flew it in ever so nicely on my monoprops. Now, one of the uh, great effort saving tips that was told to me back in the times of me learning the game was to make sure that your ships are pointing in, well not the same direction, but exactly opposite directions, like one way looking east and one looking west. Um, now that is doubly true when your ship has multiple docking ports like this. The whole uh, rigmarole be behind getting these lined up completely was a long and boring process. I had to make sure that I was controlling uh, the ship from the top uh, docking port and that I was aiming at the top docking port. I then had to make sure my alignments were matched up nicely and then not coming in too fast and also uh, lining all the others up. Uh, multiple times I managed to get the top docking port lined up nicely but just missed all the other docking ports. Um, but yeah, eventually here we go. That is the complete ship. Right, we're going to get out and go find that science bay, wherever it's at at the moment. So I thought a few of you might like to see the uh, manoeuvre node making that led up to me getting to this ship that's on a wildly different orbit to me. Uh, so the first thing I did was click through um, <coughs> the, the next couple of orbits. Um, that's what those two buttons underneath the, the red cross do if you're wondering, previous and last orbit, just to see if anything was close. Uh, no it wasn't, so I then started mucking around and seeing what orbit would put me in a very close orbit. Uh, very close encounter, rather. Um, and once I had one that was doable, literally like next orbit, I started mucking around trying to get it as, as close as possible. Um, but obviously that all went well and we came up to this point where I could break the two ships apart. Uh, that was fairly easy if a little bit long winded. I had to go around and undock each individual one but you know that's okay that's no big problem there. And we start sorting ourselves out for uh, soft docking as I used the term earlier around travel bag. The problem is I've now run out of solar power uh, and you remember I was saying about how this ship runs out of solar power really quickly. Um, yeah that, that that's kind of this is where the point where it starts to bite. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of okay at the moment. I'm like, all right, let's just let's just wait it out. Uh, and by the time we wait it out, I am quite a distance away. But more importantly, I turned to look at the planet when the sun went behind because I wanted to see what was going on. Now this meant that the um, solar panels on the back of the cage were now pointed completely away from the sun. Um, leaving me only really the one option of bringing this ship in to try and nudge him round to give him enough power to take my SAS off so we could get back to the mission in hand. Um, yeah, the problem is, well, there was a thousand problems, I don't even know where to start really. Well, the first problem was the nudge didn't seem to do anything, so what I decided was it'd probably be safer to uh, dock back up and um, try, try and get us back as a complete ship again. Uh, I know we're only 200 meters away from where we're supposed to be, but that's actually quite far when you're using RCS. Um, well, at least for me it is. I like to travel at 
well, ridiculously low velocities. I like to travel like below 10 meters per second um, when dealing with this sort of stuff. And if I'm in close and docking, I like to be below three, three meters per second. Anyway, docking was going all sorts of wrong, so I got ready to perform what was possibly my stupidest error in Kerbal Space Program today. I was like, right, we're just going to send a cage towards the travel bag. Whilst we're in, in, in um, movement towards it, I'm going to send uh, the, the cap after it. Uh, I had a small engine issue, uh, which turned out to be a bigger engine issue, whereas uh, for some reason I didn't have any fuel in one of my engines. Uh, and then I heard an explosion, and I had a look around, and of course the cage had smashed into travel bag. Um, I'd still not sorted out the problem with the cap, and just this is where everything really started going wrong. I'd managed to blow one of the fuel tanks off of travel bag, so even if everything did go well, uh, everything was all unbalanced again now. Um, I'd also, unbeknownst to me, once again run out of electric in cage. Uh, and, well, at least I could use cap well. Uh, I had to go around and rebalance all the fuels. I'm, not sh I'm still to this day not sure where that fuel went. I should imagine it went into the cage. Um, when I was uh, flying around or something. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly, but I'm pretty sure that's what happened to it. Uh, and then I'm just here having, having a look at the mess. Um, I even venture forth to try and have another go at it, um, but I, 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 wasn't, I was a little bit, little bit distraught at this time. I was, I was like, that was a silly error, Steve. A silly, silly error. But the show must go on and go on it will. So I bring the cap round, defiance in my eye. I'm like, I will not be beaten by this. I line myself up and start getting really, really close. In fact, close enough to start nudging the ship around. And I'm like, right, this is good. We just need to center up. And then I'm like, oh, wait, I've got 17 monoprop units left. In fact, I, don't even, I haven't even noticed that yet. It's very, very soon that I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm very much in the place I need to be. But I'm not going to be able to keep myself here, especially not when the cage goes uh, ripping round like that. That collision, of course, was entirely intentional. Uh, and it now gives me the idea that I really should try and um, dock on with the, with the cage over there. Unfortunately, just trying to get myself in the right place has almost used all up, up all my uh, monoprop. And then trying not to crash into the cage did indeed use my monoprop. I then spend loads more time mucking around with the cage trying to get hit, get the big thing to dock onto the little thing, which if anyone's tried anything like that, you know it's just uh, absolutely ridiculous. And I'm like, enough, we're gonna give up for tonight, we're gonna build something new and then come at this again. So after a good night's sleep, my new plan is to bring this to the party. I know it looks just like the cage. Um, it's the cage evil twin brother the cage. Um, as you can see I have added some batteries to the back of it, there's more monoprop and it's basically just a better built version of the one we've already put up. Uh, I then get the, uh, the cap off of the other cage and bring him over and put him in parked orbit. So my, my, my plan basically consists of getting everything as close as possible to begin with uh, so I don't have to try and muck around with it during the time, it's all just there and ready to be slotted in place. So, we get the cage and we, we, we just kind of like, well, what's the term? The term's translate, isn't it? We just slide our way over until everything looks absolutely perfect. Uh, and then we just come in and give it a nice, nice hug. We're like, oh, come here, bro. Yeah, nice. Uh, the thing I didn't notice at the time, and I wish I had, was that the fat um, fuel tank in the middle of the cage was actually knocking off of the small fuel tanks around the outside of travel bag. Uh, leading to this situation here where I'm just like I can't put this on there uh, yeah I, I, I gave it a good go but this really wasn't gonna work and I could see it just things were not lining up well even even when I was pointing things in different directions and just kind of like rattling them round uh, it just wouldn't go um, which is unfortunate because I really would have liked to have seen this mission pull off well but yeah that, that's where we're at Eventually I got so frustrated I gave one of these manoeuvres a go. Uh, I'm sure you'll all recognise it when it comes out. The slam it in there and thrust for all your worth technique. Uh, yeah, 
didn't really do me any favours, but I did it anyway and I thought you guys would want to see it. After that little outburst of frustration, I decided it's time to go home. But first I'm going to let the cage and his cap have a little rumba. That, that was nice. Uh, I do like it when docking ports get that whole sort of oscillation thing on the go. I think it looks quite good. Uh, and we're going to just figure out how we're going to bring these guys home nice and safe. Because let's be honest, we want to try and um, recover these for as much worth as possible. Because... Well, we've just wasted a whole load of bits, fuel, money, reputation, even science opportunities. I'm just trying to fix this one problem. Some might call it irresponsible. I call it pushing the boundaries of what a uh, valid space program can actually get up to. Honest. And that's what I'm going to tell the board when they ask me about it. Right, so in that aim, uh, we're bringing down Cage and I've gone, a, gone and pushed him around in the atmosphere to try and bring him down as close as possible uh, to the space center. Uh, I probably could have done a bit better if I was a little bit more on it when I was um, sorting out my maneuver node at the top of the orbit but seeing as like I decided this when the planet was half a spin away and also my orbit was up at perhaps I think I got quite close by hitting that island there. Uh, the island with the uh, alternate airstrip if you're wondering. Okay so that was the new cage down, now we're going to try and put the original double cage with cage cap and entire ensemble down. Um, so I've got a little bit more time to think because when I put down new cage, uh, this, these guys were literally just at the point where I was like, ah, if I start deorbiting right now, I can end up uh, right on top of the um, Kerbal Space Center. Unfortunately, because we were just too damn high at the time, we couldn't really get, get this down where we wanted it to go. Um, all, plus all the random things that had gone wrong earlier on in the mission, like my fuel tanks were unbalanced, and, and yeah, just, just all sorts of things went wrong. But still managed to put it down in the Kerb Atlantic Ocean, which is not on the other side of the planet, so that's, that's good for me. And as shown here, I lost about half the value of the rockets from that. They cost about 100,000 to put down. I got 40 back. Uh, and here's, here's the issue. Here's the problem. What are we going to do with this thing here? Well, we're definitely going to go get the two Kerbals back. That's a must. As for the hardware, we're either going to stick a claw on it covered in um, parachutes or we're just going to leave it there. <laughs> 